Good morning, everybody. Bible study time. We have a good one today. Let's get into the Word. Hop on. Let me see some people getting on there. It is time to go. Uh, looks like I'm about right on the money. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Hey, everybody. It's time to get into the Word. So good to have you uh, in the uh, in the house today. Got Brother Darren Lund. That's that's the most important thing. I got my got my trucker brother and his wife. You are the first two on A plus and Sister Sandy's number three. Welcome, you three. It is so good to have you. Morning, my brother. Good to have you, Sister Shelley. How are the eyes? Been praying for your eyes, Sister. And uh, praise God. Hi, Terry. Good to have you, Brother Terry. Bless you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to have some fun today, like always. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, Terry Baltrush, you help me with this because I know that you are very good at details. Um, I do have a few people that have to hop on and uh, get off in 15 minutes because they get a break and they love to watch during their break. And so uh, give me 15 minutes at 10.15. Wait, how about at 10.10, at 10 after 10, Terry, say 10 minutes is up or something, 10 minutes. Just give me a little sign so that I can do a little a Devo prayer with that group. And then I'm going to go on and my Devo is going to turn into a Bible study. And uh, my prayer at the end will be intercessory prayer and not a short little cute prayer. Jim Buckeye, you're here? Hallelujah. Good to have you, Sister Sherry and uh, Sister Jody. We're going to, hey, we're going to talk about something that's on my heart today that um, I, I am hating. Thanks, Terry. I have been hating watching these ridiculous news uh, things of uh, America <clears throat> on fire. I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like what's happening. And so, how, what did Jesus talk about when he talked about unity? And we need to get people on. Hit share, hit like. Um, looking for some, we, we got about, oh, I'd say at least eight to ten more people that are still going to hop on eventually. Hit share, hit like. Let's, let's, uh, let's, get, uh, let's get rolling. Oh, I know Paige is with you, Jimbo. Um, good morning, Brother David. Good to have you, man. If you got your Bibles, turn to John 17, verse 6. John 17, verse 6. Uh, we, as a, we, as a, we as a little Bible study here, we got to deal with unity. Um, not amongst ourselves. We've got good unity amongst us, but we got to deal with how is our nation dealing with it? How can we talk to, about unity to our, to our country? Um, because I, I want you to engage in that, in, in just talking about in a loving way, as a believer. And uh, it, is, it is very important. So we're going to take a look at John 17, starting at verse 6. Let's hop on. I've revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. This is Jesus speaking. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. The they is you. Verse 7. Now they, you, know that everything, everything you have given me comes from you. Jesus is talking about God. For I gave them the word you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Unity. They may be one as we are one. You know how we make unity in our country? We bring people into a living personal relationship with Jesus Christ like you have. Then they will have unity with us. And then we can follow the word, uh, not the word, we can follow, we can follow the rules and the laws of the road just like everyone 
uh, is called to do. Okay, so verse 12. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so the scriptures will be fulfilled. That's Judas. 13. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. We can amen that. Wow. So the world has hated them. Um, where was I? Uh, I have given them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer, is that, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you take them and protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth of your word, because your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For, for them to sanctify myself, to, that they too may be sanctified. My prayer is not, that they, is not for them alone. My prayer also is for those who will believe in me through their message. Wow. Powerful. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Do you see how unity works here, folks? May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. This whole Bible study is going to be about unity. Because we want unity in our nation right now. Then the world will know <coughs> that you sent me and have loved them even as, as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, you see where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you've given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world, Though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now, folks, we are one in Christ. We glorify in Him. You're on with me every day in the Word. The Gospels, uh, I, I frequently jump between a psalm, a proverb, or a gospel. Sometimes I'll hop into an Old Testament text. But we read them, and when we read the Gospels, we read about Jesus, what He's doing, how He's in God, and God is in, in Him, and how they are one. And, and we, we, we even read about how he lived his life, how he performed miracles, how he prayed his prayer life. And only on rare occasions are we informed at any length of what he prayed for. In this great prayer of Jesus, before he goes up on the cross, before he goes out to face the angry riot mobsters, who nailed him to the cross. We see his priorities. And this, is, this, this must become our priorities. Jesus prays not only for his disciples, but he also, uh, for those who believe in, in the future of, of where Christ is, the, the Christ who lives within them, for those who are holding on to the future. He prays for the entire church which includes you and me in verse 20. This prayer is dominated by the theme of unity. Jesus' is Jesus's prayer is not only about unity amongst his disciples, but it is also about unity within the church and the future church. Now, the future church does not become the future church unless we get out and lead people to a real personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We got a lot of people living in false conversion, thinking, you know, because my name's written on the, the church membership rolls, I'm saved. 
And that's just not good. And so we are going to be looking at a number of things here today and tomorrow. This is part one. Tomorrow will be part two. Today we're going to be took, taking a look at the motive for unity is the great commission of Jesus. We're going to be looking at the means of unity uh, is the Holy Spirit. We're going to be looking at the mark of unity. It's that the love of Jesus is in us. You know, the evil one, Lucifer, he would love to, to put the, the mark of the beast on you, 666. Do you know God puts a mark on you? It's his love. And then finally, tomorrow, we're going to be taking a look. The measure of unity is the visibility of Jesus. The visibility of Jesus. What is that? Well, it has to do with our unity. Just a little hint. And so today... Uh, we're going to dive into the motive for unity is the Great Commission. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at how Jesus prayed for complete unity that the world may believe in verse 23. And as we wrap, wrap our arms around this, we're going to know and we're going to see that the unity of God is found in Christ and Christ is found in us and we are drawn into that perfect unity for the great love of God. Father God, we thank you for those who can only be on for 15 minutes. And as their time is wrapping up, Lord, may your perfect unity be in their hearts as they hear and believe this beautiful work of God for them, in them, and through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, for you 15-minute breakers, I hope I got you out of here just in time. Good to have you. Now, for those of you who want to go deep, stick with me. Now we're going from a Devo to a Bible study. And so the prayer is a dominant theme of unity in this text. And we don't, a lot of times, get to go in depth. We know Jesus goes off to pray. But exactly what he's praying about, he, he gives us little snapshots. But here is a big, long prayer to his Father. And it's beautiful. It's about... It's about, uh, yeah. it's about the beauty of what God is, is doing in you. The prayer is dominated by the theme of unity. Jesus' prayers not only are for unity amongst his disciples, but the church that will be. He prays for unity, uh, and it's, 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 unity only happens through the Trinity. Uh, about two years ago, I remember preaching a message and I talked about the perfect dance that can never be interrupted is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They bring unity into your soul when you consider the Father, consider the Son, consider the Holy Spirit. And so uh, when we ask the question, we get into the Word of God and we ask the question, who, what, when, where, why? We see Jesus motivates unity through the Great Commission. That's how. Jesus prayed for complete unity so that the world may believe in verse 23. And know the unity of God in verses 21 and 24. We can't really know the unity of God unless Christ is living in us. We can't really know that Christ is living in us until we've come to a place where we have surrendered our lives to Christ. We've been broken, hopeless, and helpless, and we get on our knees, we call on his name, we give it up. God calls you to give it up. Everything. Everything. God asks for it all. And when you surrender your life to Christ, God starts to turn you from a man of this world or a woman of this world into a person who puts God's stuff first in all matters. He starts to live and reign in your heart, mind, in your checkbook, 
you'd rather you'd rather give money to the works of God. Are people going to come to know Jesus? Our church is going to be planted. That's the most important thing to you because you know, hey, I'm 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I got 20, 30, 40, 50 years of my life left and I want to make an impact with my wife, my life, wife too, eternally. So what I say, do and think matters and it all starts with the unity that God has with you through Christ his son. He breaks down those barriers. And one of the greatest barriers is uh, is is disunity in the church. One of the greatest barriers is disunity in politics. The devil knows this. One of the greatest barriers is disunity in our nation right now. Where some people feel entitled and so they think that they should have what you have. Good morning, Lulu. Good to have you. It's crazy, folks, it's crazy. But how do we help those people that are living outside of unity to come into unity? They must come to Jesus. We can't make more government laws. We can't make more more concessions. We can't do this, can't do that. We as the church, if we don't do it, it's not going to happen, period. You have Jesus. You have a home in heaven. You have a mansion. Rest. We don't have to fret. But what we do need to do is recognize that the reason why there's a lack of unity in our country is because there's a lack of Jesus in people's hearts. And the reason why there's a lack of Jesus in people's hearts because I haven't been preparing people like you to go and do the Great Commission as much as I should have been doing. God, forgive me. Let's get off our duffs and get out in the highways and byways and talk about our relationship with Jesus. And pastors out there that are listening to me, you know you're just as guilty. We need to confess this and move out, move our church out to help people know Jesus. That's how these riots end. We know it. And so the unity comes through God and one of the greatest barriers is is disunity in the church, is is disunity with politics. The moment a political party becomes disunited, it loses popularity and power. You see it. It happens in the secular world all the time and even more so in the church. And Jesus says that he protected his disciples and kept them safe so that they would be one. That's important. We must be one. Now he prays in verse 15, Father, protect them from the evil one. Who will seek to divide them? The evil one is trying to divide the church. And the more the church can be divided, the more the country can be divided. Do you see what? Do you see how it happens? When churches are fighting against each other, people lose interest. Now we got some churches, they have lost their way. They need to come back to the cross. They need to confess their sins. They've got a, they got a social gospel where they think, you know, getting saved is, is doing something that's going to be a, a political whatever. Uh, it's going to help the narrative of some people group or whatever. Are we called to do good things like that? All the time, every day. And you should be doing it. Finding a way to do it. But it's not the gospel. The gospel is bringing Christ to someone who's guilty of sin. We all know what that means because we're guilty of sin every day. We confess our sins and we believe Jesus has done it all. And when we believe it, he gives us the freedom and the hope to start praying the big prayers and to see that people are in desperate need of coming to a personal relationship with Jesus. That's how we bring people into the church. You see, if we get the church right, we'll get the country right. We can't get the country right first to try to get the church right. That's backwards. It's putting the cart before the horse. Joy comes through unity. Disunity is the greatest joy stealer in this country right now. Unity is 
the most powerful thing in this country that this country needs right now. Right now. And so the second thing about unity is the means of unity is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Trinity, when the Word of God is properly preached, when the Word of God is given, the Holy Spirit starts to work in people's lives. The Holy Spirit starts to, starts to draw people out of the nominal life that they're in and show them their sin, confess their sin. The Holy Spirit draws them into us, the church, so that they can be one with us as we are one with Him. You see what I'm saying? And so when the, when the blood of, of Jesus starts re refreshing and renewing and drawing people in, the unity of the Holy Spirit starts to speak through, through, through His Word and through you. And, and there's a great love for God and then a great love for our neighbor and then there's great love for our nation. Jesus prays for your holiness. Jesus prays, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth in verse 17. Sanctify them. You are sanctified because God spoke it. I'm reading God's word. And so when I read God's word or you read God's word or whenever someone's reading God's word, the word is being spoken and it makes alive. It creates faith. It does a work in people's hearts. And when we stand on the word, believe the word, declare the word to a lost and dying world, things start happening. Holiness comes. We need holiness right now. Not because we have to, but because we get to. It's a gift. Gospel gives it and gives us the opportunity to see it's all done for us. But because it's all done for us doesn't mean that we get fat, sassy, and lazy and, and happy in all of the gifts that we've got and not do the Great Commission. Holiness comes as you welcome the Holy Spirit. Have you welcomed the Holy Spirit? Last Sunday was Pentecost. This Sunday, every Sunday's Pentecost really because the Holy Spirit comes through His Word and the Spirit of Truth is coming to dwell in you right now. I'm not kidding. As I speak the word, as you are coming under conviction, even at this very second, I would just say, just say, yes, Holy Spirit, come into me once again. Flood me with your love and mercy. Fill me with your unity so that I may be one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as you are one with them. Because I am the church and I'm going to be wed to you forever. I want that. Jesus prays that I may be in them as they are in me. Verse 26. This is the most extraordinary truth of the New Testament, that Jesus comes to live in you by the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He's speaking to you now, isn't he? He's speaking to you. That same Holy Spirit that lives in every Christian, in whatever church, in whatever denomination, that Holy Spirit is speaking to you and He's calling you to unite with Him so that He can unite you with who's ever on your heart, with wherever there's been division. That's where it all begins, my brothers and sisters. That's where it all begins. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to continue on in part two of this. We're going to take a look at, at uh, the mark of unity is the love of Jesus. What is that? How does that work in me? How can I have that? We're going to take a look at the measure of unity. When the Spirit of God is living in me, what should my life really look like? What kind of fruit should be coming out of me? How, how is that measured? We're going to see that tomorrow. I want you to join me. I want you to be part of what God is doing. But today I want to leave you with, with this beautiful picture that unity is the Great Commission. Unity is the Holy Spirit that has come to live in you. Good morning, Sheila. Good to have you today.
That's the beauty of how the Holy Ghost works through His Word to declare to you, My son, my daughter, I forgive you. I love you. I fill you with the hope and mercy, grace and love that only, only Jesus could have won on Calvary. And as you say, yes, Jesus, I receive that. Yes, God, forgive me of my sin. Yes, God, I want unity with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As you just draw that in, like you pull in air into your lungs, know that your forgiveness is full and complete in God, and He is, he is producing something through His Spirit that's going to be an awesome picture of what your life will look like on the other side of glory. Oh yeah. You're going to get you're going to get on the other side of glory and you're going to you're going to God's going to look let you look back at your life. And you are going to see all of the amazing things that God has accomplished through your brokenness, through your yielding to the Spirit of the Most High, God's going to set you free to see more and more how He's going to use you in whatever days, weeks, months, or years we have left on this earth. You, your life is very important. You were created with a purpose. You were designed with the hand of God God knew you and He loved you before He formed you in your mother's womb because He knew that there would be a day just like this with Pastor Sean where He would be reading the Word and declaring God's unity is now, is now living in you, drawing you to the cross, washing you in His freedom of, of, of newness and hope so that you could confess your sins, call on His name daily, walk in His truth daily. It's His sanctified work pouring into you. It's a beautiful thing. And this is how God starts to restore our country. I said earlier, it's not about getting the country right so that we can get the church right. It's about getting the church right before we can get the country right. There's disunity in the country because the church has not been doing its job. The church has been too lazy. God, wake the church up so we can get out into the highways and byways and pour the love of Jesus on broken hearts. That's us, not me. Us. The church was sent. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, His unity is sending you. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. Would you bless, Father God, every person on this thread today? Father God, would you unify our nation under the banner of Jesus Christ? Would you go into every tribe, tongue, every city, every race, every people group, and help them to realize that we all have the same constitution. We all have the same inalienable rights. And Father, I pray that for those that have been hurt, for those that feel as if that they haven't had the same kind of rights as other people have had, Father God, I pray that you would use the church, that you cause the church to step in and to bring healing where that emotional and spiritual pain is rooted it itself. Lord, the country can't fix that. Only you can. And so we pray for unity where that division is, is so ripe right now. And Father, you're going to create that unity through your children who are listening to this post right now. And Father, the only way that they're going to reach out to their friends is for your Holy Spirit to fill them to love them, to draw them, to declare to them, not only are they forgiven, but they are set free 
to drink deep the promises and to believe that it is done in you. And so, Father, I just commit your church and the work you have before the church into your hands. Father, I pray for those that are coming to know you for the first time, that they would just be be, be drawn in by the love of God and, and truly would surrender their life to you, Jesus. Confess their sin to you. Call upon your name. And to believe that you are their God. And that the perfect unity of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit would start working its way into, into their heart. Whoever's hearing this for the first time and drawn it in. And for those who have been believers many years, that the perfect unity of God would start to set you free of false teachings. Where you haven't been stepping out, where you haven't been believing it's it, this isn't my problem. Where, where you can see, Father God, now where you can show your church that we are all sent. So, Father, send us. You just... Like Isaiah said, here am I, send me. Father God, send us by the power of the Holy Spirit in unity to speak unity to our brothers and sisters. Literally. To our aunts and uncles. To our moms and dads. To our cousins. To our neighbors. To people that are coming into our, country, into our state from other states to create problems. to burn down buildings and break windows and steal and loot, Lord Jesus, the answer is you. And it has to be the church. So, Father, help the church to start praying about how we can proclaim you so that you can heal this great divide in America. And all God's people said, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. All God's people said, amen. Amen. Yes. Amen, Sheila. We must love one another. That's, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Amen, Lulu. Amen, Sister Jody, my physical sister Jody. A amen, Cousin Jared, my physical cousin Jared. Amen, Sister Shannon. May the Lord bless you today. Thanks for joining me. Say hi to your sister, Lynn. Maybe she's listening. Lynn Wilhelm, where are you? Hey, Sister Sherry. Amen and amen. Carla Fuchs, amen. Mary Pat Wall, amen. Amen. I hope Faye got a hold of you. Sandy Burns, amen. David, may the Lord bless you, brother. Glad to have you on today. This is the unity of God. Us. We're together. We're one. We're we're, we're proclaiming that which God has done for a hopeless, helpless old us. God can get you and I. He can get anybody. We know that. But it all starts with Jesus. Amen, James. Jimbo. Paige. Bless you out there. Miss you. Amen. This is the goodness of God speaking to you. May you be blessed today as unity flows into your spirit and you start to see of the importance of when you're proclaiming Jesus, you're proclaiming unity to the cross, to the King of kings and Lord of lords, to our nation. You want to help our country? Start giving people Jesus because he is unity. And I know y'all said amen. This is Pastor Sean Bowman, Jamestown, North Dakota, Victory Lutheran. So glad you joined me today for prayer and for devotion and for a deeper Bible study and how God creates and, and, and draws us into that unity. Go as God's children with that great commission, knowing that everything you need to speak forth the promises and word of God to people that are lost and dying and hopeless, you have been given. You have a story. Even if it just began this morning, you have a story. Start telling people. And Darren Lund, where's your trucker friend? I haven't seen him in a long time. Bless you, Sheila. Good to have you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m.